rational numbers. Let's first try to understand what are rational numbers. Any number which can be represented as quotient of two integers where the denominator is not zero is called a rational number or another way of saying it would be any number which can be represented in the form of p by q where p and q are both integers and q is definitely not equal to zero is a rational number. They are represented by the capital Q and the examples of a rational number would be any number like 5 by 12, 2 by 3 and perfect square roots and cube roots like square root of 4 and cube root of 27. All of these are rational numbers. Let us now try to understand the relation of rational numbers with different set of numbers. We've read about natural numbers, whole numbers and integers in our previous classes. So now let's try and see how they are related to rational numbers. Natural numbers are all of these numbers are nothing but rational numbers with a denominator set to 1. Now let's try to see it pictorially. This smaller circle which is representing n is basically a set of natural numbers. The bigger circle which is the light blue circle this is basically representing all the whole numbers and we all know that whole numbers is nothing but the natural numbers plus a number 0. So now if we see the green circle is representing the z the all the integers here it is they are represented by z and integers are again you know a superset of natural numbers and whole numbers because they contain the negative numbers as well and now if we see the biggest circle the dark blue color which is represented by q they actually represent the rational number and now We'll, we'll try and see how it actually happens. As we've just explained, the natural numbers, whole numbers, and integers, if all of them are taken as quotients of integers with the denominator integer being 1, we can call that all of them are actually nothing but rational numbers. Now let's try and understand how are fractions related with the rational numbers. Fractions are also a subset of rational numbers because fractions are nothing but a part of a whole. So they're only positive, which would mean that they're actually the quotient of two whole numbers instead of the rational numbers, which are the quotient of two integers. So that means if we try and see it on the, on the number line, we see that the right hand side of the number line, right hand from zero, right hand side from zero is basically representing the fractions, but the whole number line all of these numbers which are represented on the on the number line are basically natural rational numbers so we can say that rational numbers are basically a superset of the fractions now let's try and understand the decimal representation of rational numbers because rational numbers we've all we've defined till now as p by q where both p and q are integers and q is not equal to 0 but can they be represented in any other form yes rational numbers can also be represented in the decimal forms so some of the ter terminating decimal numbers we'll take an example we'll take as an example like 1.25 now that's a terminating decimal number what does terminating decimal number mean terminating decimal numbers are the numbers which have a decimal part but the decimal part terminates after a fixed number of digits and that fixed number of digit could be 2 could be 5 could be 10 could be 15 but it terminates at that point so that is called they're called the terminating decimal numbers now let's try and see why do we say that the terminating decimal numbers are actually nothing but rational numbers let's try and convert these decimal numbers into the form p by q so remove the, si the simple part that we know is to remove the decimal and put an equivalent power of 10 in the denominator say for example in the example that we've taken 1.25 if we remove the decimal we put 100 in the denominator because there are two places after the decimal so we simply make it 125 by 100 and that then we try to simplify it to its simplest form by dividing it with a common factor which is 25 in this case so it becomes 5 by 4 now we can clearly say that 5 by 4 is a rational number of the form p by q. So 1.25 is necessarily nothing but a rational number. So we can say that any such number, any terminating decimal numbers can be finally represented in the form of rational numbers. So they are 
rational numbers. Now, we'll talk about another decimal representation of rational numbers, and that is non-terminating recurring decimal numbers. So we first talked about the terminating decimal numbers where it terminates, which so has a fixed number of digits after the decimal. But non-terminating recurring, what are the non-recurring terminate non-terminating recurring decimal numbers? These are the numbers which do not terminate after the decimal. Say for example, a number like 1.3333 and 33 continuing in finite number of times. That's a non-terminating recurring decimal number because it is not terminating. And why recurring? Because 3 is continuously repeated. So it's a recurring decimal number. And this number is of the form of pure recurring decimal number because the, decim the number after the decimal, the digit after the decimal is completely repeated that is the digit which is being repeated continuously and then there are some numbers which are mixed recurring decimal which is of the type 1.245353 if we see in this part 53 is the recurring part after the decimal but 24 after the decimal are the digits which are not repeated Right? So it is mixed recurring decimal. It is non-terminating for sure because 5, 3 is continuing in finite number of times. But it is mixed in the sense that all the uh, digits after the decimal are not recurring. Some digits occur only once and then they stop. And after that, the, there are certain digits which continue to get repeated. So that pattern gets repeated over and over till infinite number of times. So that is why this is a mixed recurring decimal numbers. Now let's try and understand why these two type of non-terminating recurring decimal numbers are also a part of the rational numbers. Let's try and understand how do we convert these into the P by in its P by Q form. Let first of all let let's define a variable V X and make it equal to 1.3333. Now, if we multiply this by 10, the number becomes 10.3333, which clearly shows that the decimal part, the decimal part of the two numbers, which is x and 10x, remains the same. So now, we, since the decimal part remains the same, if we subtract these two, if we subtract first from the second, we'll clearly get a number which does not have a decimal part of it because the decimal part gets subtracted out. So we get, if we subtract, we get 9x is equal to 12. So x is equal to 12 by 9. And simplifying it further, we get x is equal to 4 by 3. So the rational equivalent, rational p by q form of the number 1.33333 is 4 by 3. So we clearly, we can clearly see that this number is also a rational number. So similarly, we can prove for the other one also that the non-terminating recurring decimal numbers are always rational numbers. Now, uh, since we have said that, you know, the, all the numbers of the form P by Q are rational numbers, we are saying the decimal, terminating decimal numbers and the non-terminating recurring decimal numbers are also rational numbers. So let's try and see, are there any numbers which are not, which do not fall under the category of rational numbers? Yes, there are quite a few. So first is the non-terminating, non-recurring decimal numbers. That's of the form 1.11010010001. So if you see none of the part, none of the part after the decimal is getting, is is recurring, right? If you see this part, it is different. Here it is 01, then 001, then 0001, and it is continuously changing. So none of the part as such is recurring. Now these cannot be represented in the form of P by Q at all. So these are non-rational numbers. Then the numbers of the type which are not perfect square roots or cube roots, etc. For example, square root of 5, cube root of 9, and so on. These are not rational numbers because we, if we try to find the value, Till multiple decimal points the decimals do not get repeated so these are not rational numbers and some mathematical constants like pi and e are also not rational numbers 
Now, it's important to understand, you know, what is the use of rational numbers? Why are we studying rational numbers at all? Why do I, why can't we just, you know, deal with whole numbers, integers? We were so happy dealing with whole numbers, integers and uh, natural numbers. Why are we introducing the concept of rational numbers here? So first of all, things around us do not always happen in integers. We know that, right? Sometimes we say we ha we've had, we've done one eighth of the task. We've had one sixth of the pizza, so, right? We we don't eat the whole pizza in one go. We take piece by piece. So we say one. We've I've eaten one sixth of the pizza. Similarly, now again, you know, if we're talking about one eighth of the task done, one sixth of the pizza, then we're talking about fractions. Then why introduce the concept of rational numbers at all? You know, if we already had fractions, we've studied them. So yes, in science, the vector quantities are there, which need to be represented in negatives also. Hence, the need for the negative rational number. So if we say that a car is moving from its point, if we move, if it moves in the left direction, then it's moving in a negative direction. And if it's moving in the right direction, it is moving in the positive direction. Now you cannot say, you cannot say that it has moved five meter without telling the direction, right? Supposing somebody is moving from his school to, the, to his home. Now you need to know the direction if the person tries to take a direction opposite to the direction of his home. Now he's farther away. If he was, if his school is five kilometers from home and he moves one kilometer from the school, but in a direction opposite to the home, he'll be now six kilometer from home. But he, if he moves towards the home, he'll be four kilometer from home. So that clearly means that there is a concept of direction there and that is where you know the the numbers are represented the quantities are represented with the negatives also and due to the ease of calculations some constants have been approximated to a rational number that's another use of rational numbers you know we we just in the previous slide we just said that pi is not a rational number but for simple for simpler simplicity in the calculations pi is taken as 22 by 7 in many calculations so that is where you know there's another need we for for the ease of calculations we sometimes denote approximate to the approximate the non rational numbers the irrational numbers to the nearest rational number friends i hope you enjoyed the session if you find it useful please like it and share it with your friends you can visit us at our cool smart learning website and post your queries there and please subscribe to the cool smart learning channel for getting updates on the new sessions thank you